our viewers, we thank God today because God has given us yet another opportunity to have our online service today. So we welcome you so much and we want to tell you that we love you so much and we thank God for you. So today, God has been so good to us. He has been so faithful. Nothing has uh, taken God from his throne. So we need to just praise him even in a situation like the way we are in our country because our God is not changing. Situations are changing, but our God remains to be God. So he is expecting us to love him the more. He is expecting us uh, to give him all the praises and worship. He is expecting us uh, to give him uh, what he expects from our hearts. So I want to thank God today because his word is uh, still alive in us. And his word is still talking to us today. And so I want to pray that the man of God may come here to minister that word that is going to have a very big meaning in our lives today in the name of the Lord. So let us pray in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the praises, all the honor, oh God. Because you are still in your throne of honor, oh God. And so we worship your name. We give you all the glory. We love you, Jesus, in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for such an opportunity that you've given us today that we may reason from your word today through your servant, oh God. I pray that a mighty God in Jesus' name, that today your servant, oh God, because he's expecting from you, Lord, that you may use him today in the in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, my Father, that you may anoint him, anoint him once again, O oh God, to the glory and honor of your name. Father God, because you are here to hear, uh, to listen to your voice, together with all our viewers, O oh God, I pray that you have God, that your word, my Father, is going to bring a change in our lives in the name of the Lord. It is going to give us a good direction and good dimension in in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you and we worship your name. Holy Spirit, take control. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Our viewers, don't move away from there. Listen from the word of God. And the word of God is going to give you a new direction in the name of Jesus. Welcome the man of God and continue giving us the word in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you for that uh, powerful prayer before our God. I'm well, and the Lord is uh, good to me. I'm doing well in faith, and uh, the Lord has sustained my faith, and I love him so much. Um, I welcome you to our service so that we may hear whatever the Lord has uh, for us and I believe we will be blessed today I want to introduce um, a new topic or a sermon entitled the true worship which I believe I'll lay the foundation of the message today as part one and on Sunday I'll conclude by uh, talking about the characteristics of the true worship or true worshippers and the Lord will bless us. May we open our Bibles or we can open our Bibles from the book of John from the book of John chapter number 4 from verse 19 to verse 24 and the Bible says, Sir, the woman said, You must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshipped? 
Jesus replied, "Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming uh, when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. Well, we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming. Indeed, it is now. It is here now. When true worshippers will you worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So, those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. In verse 26, then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. I am uh, the Messiah. And that is the word of God. And we know much about uh, the, the, this woman called the Samaritan woman. And I, I would like to introduce uh, by uh, explaining a little who the Samaritans were or where they originated. Uh, when we get to the book of Ezra, we find after 70 years of exile or of uh, Babylon, Ezra brought or brought back the, the, the Israelites back to, to Jerusalem uh, the second time. We know the, the first time they were brought back by, Ez, uh, by Zerubbabel who came with that zeal and burden and passion to build uh, the temple. Uh, the second time they were brought approximately 50,000 Jews they were brought back by, by Ezra and the third time by Nehemiah and now during the second return if you read from the book of Ezra chapter number 7, 8, 9 uh, you, you find that when Ezra brought them with that zeal and that burden because the Bible says that he was proficient he was eloquent in the things of the laws of God. And the Bible says he found that uh, uh, the Jews who had returned the first time with the Zerubbabel, they had uh, uh, married and they had intermarried with the foreign nations. The women from other nations and the men from other nations, they had intermarried with the, with the Israelites. And what he did, he called for, for a public gathering and he did that no, and literal separation and he divorced all those Israelites who had intermarried with other nations. Now, uh, the Israelites and the foreign nations who had intermarried, the children whom they had shared, or the children who were born by them, they are the ones called the Samaritans. The Samaritans. And uh, now, uh, from the beginning, or from that time, uh, they were considered as outcasts. They were neither Jews, they were neither foreigners, they were just, they were just there. And uh, 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 because they were counted as the outcasts, they had been restricted from sharing in the traditions and the cultures of the Jews or the cultures of the Israelites. And that is why we see this woman uh, very firm and very rigid in whatever she believed. Because from that time they had been taught that they should share. They should not share anything. Eh? They cannot partake anything that concerned uh, the Israelites or the Jews. And uh, the Bible says that uh, when Jesus was passing by, uh, he found this woman uh, who was by the well. And Jesus... Uh, uh, starts the conversation by telling the woman can you give me the water and the woman stands and tells Jesus you know I am a Samaritan you are a Jew and uh, there is nothing that uh, 
uh, that, uh, that we that we share ten says Jesus replied if you only knew the gift no verse 7 soon a, a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her please give me a drink he was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do they had nothing in common with the Samaritan she said to Jesus you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan why are you asking for a drink and uh, this uh, this this conversation between Jesus and the woman it opens a very big discussion about the purpose and the mission of Jesus on earth because after their conversation Jesus stands and, and, and tell this woman uh, that uh, that the father is looking for those who you worship him that way now I want to start uh, by, by, by saying that uh, by Jesus now talking to this woman he was trying to drive the point that uh, I am the one who had been prophesied that will come because we see in verse 25 the woman saying I know the Messiah is coming the one who is called Christ when he comes he will explain everything to us then Jesus told her I am the Messiah and we know about the Jews and, 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 and some uh, Samaritans even today they don't believe eh? the present Jews they don't believe that Jesus came because they could not expect Jesus to come the way he came to be born in that cow shed eh? they expected Jesus to come with the heavens to come with the moon and the stars and everything and Jesus now tried to, to speak to, to this woman about the truth and the truth was about now Jesus him uh, self now verse 21 believe me dear woman the time is coming when it is no longer a matter of where you worship the father on this mountain or in Jerusalem you Samaritans knows very little about the one you worship while well, we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews now I have said that I will talk about a, a true worship and especially a time like now when uh, the, the, the gathering of the saints is very limited and uh, I want to pose a question to you are you still a worshiper with this season whereby we cannot uh, come together as a big group and worship and pray and praise and jump and sing and we sing those very sweet and very inspiring and encouraging songs and worshiping songs are you are you still a worshiper and i want uh, to ask you uh, uh, that question now from this word the woman brought up a popular theological issue which which issue the correct place to worship eh? but her question to jesus about where to worship it brought a very deep need jesus directed the conversation to a much more important point that uh, the location of worship is not nearly important as the attitude of the worshiper and this is what i would like to say that uh, when we talk about true worship we don't talk about where but we talk about how it's not a matter of where we talk about of what and how and later in the sermon i'll mention more about the people who worshiped the lord in truth and in spirit they were not in the temple and some of them were at a very awkward places even in their uh, worship now jesus by speaking uh, to this woman wanted to mean that he is not when the bible says that god is spirit and those 
Jesus was worshiping, was worshiping in truth and spirit. Jesus wanted to mean that uh, he is not a physical being limited to one place. God is omnipresent or God is everywhere and he can be worshipped anywhere at any time. It is not where we worship that counts. But how we worship the Lord. And that is when our, the question comes. Is your worship genuine and true? I, I, I want to talk about one of the, I don't know whether I'll, I'll call it an attribute of God. About how God is Jesus. And I would like to, to refer to Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus chapter number 20. From verse 4. The Bible says, You shall not worship or make yourself an idol in, in the form of anything in heaven, above, or on earth, beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments and keep my commandment. I, I want to say this that uh, by by God saying that I'm a Jesus God, God is not putting himself into a, a level or a position of unfaithfulness. Because we know Jesus is not a fruit of the Spirit. Even when we read from Galatians chapter number 5 and uh, verse 21. So usually his Jesus concern concerns Israel and assume the covenant relationship. Why? Because the moment we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and we are in communion and in good relationship with the Lord, there is that which God follows. That agreement and that covenant that we have made with him. That is why God demands worship and there is no way you can claim that you are a true believer if you will not do the act of worshipping the Lord. And that is why we are talking more about how or what is that true uh, worship. Now, the Lord has the light, an exclusive light to possess. Had the right, an exclusive light to possess Israel and to claim her love and allegiance. Because God loved Israel and he is the one who constituted that family. That is why he demanded that I am the one, I am the Lord who took you from the land of Egypt to Canaan. And that is why I demand worship from you. And we know that Jesus is part of the vocabulary of love. Let me tell you, there is no love without jealousy. Eh? Because if you find that there is something that you love so much, and you are not pained when there is a threat that that something or that person can be taken away from you, that love is not true. Praise the name of the living God. And so God, God had that, that feeling. Or has that feeling even today. That we are his people. And we belong to him. And so he must make sure that he secure. He protect us. From any enemy who can come. And try to take us from him. Eh? And one way to show that we love him. And to show that we are with him. Is by offering uh, worship. To him. Now, there are three things that concerns when we talk about uh, 
the jealousy uh, of God. There are three things that God was demanding from, or the things that uh, showed that God was zealous. Number one, God would demand exclusive devotion to Himself. And that is the point. God would demand exclusive devotion to himself. Yeah? The point of this connection between God and the Israel was when the Israelites paid allegiance when they bowed when they worshipped other gods. God would rage in anger. It was so painful huh? that people who belonged to God, people whom God had killed and wiped away so many enemies on the way, it would be very bad for God to see them now bowing, worshipping, and praising other gods. Number two, God would deliver judgment to all those who would oppose him. That is why we see in Exodus chapter number 20, by, by God speaking to Moses and telling him, now I give you this this commandment, go and take them to the children of Israel. And the first commandment was, you shall have no other God before me. You shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth, beneath or in the, in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. Why? Because number one, God demanded or exclusive devotion and number two God would deliver judgment to all who opposed him that is the, the point number two and that is what that was the beginning of the of, of what of, of the fight and I call it that way of the fight of disagreement between God and Israel eh? look that time when Moses went to the mountain and he left the Israelites there down. And the brother to Moses called Aaron. Hmm? Look at that time when he calls the Israelites together to bring the, the what? The rings. Eh? The necklaces. And they melted them. And they made what? They made a calf. And when Moses was there up, he had the, the rations. He had the uh, people celebrating. And when he went there, he felt so bad. Because these people had forgotten where the Lord had come. Or the, the Lord had brought them from. Eh? And that now, God would dispense judgment on anyone who would worship other God. Other than the true God or the Jehovah God. And number three, God would vindicate anyone or the people who worshipped him. Anyone who stood right. Anyone who stood against anything that would stand between him and God. The Bible says, and God would vindicate. To vindicate is to defend. God would, de would de defend. God would show favor to anyone who would stand and worship and he pray and he praise his name. Praise the name of the living God. And so, from the word of God, we see from that beginning, from the beginning, that God was there. God was there to be worshipped. God was there to be loved. From that time of Adam and Eve, when they were created and they were put into the garden of Eden. We see God demanding what? Worship. Even though we don't see Adam and Eve trying to, to do what? To give. And to do things that would show that as though they were worshipping the Lord. But we see their sons, Cain 
and Abel uh, when we read from the from the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 4 Genesis chapter number 4 though there is no foundation we don't see Cain I, I mean Adam and Eve doing the worship doing the literal worship or taking the rubs and sacrificing to God but we see In Genesis chapter number 4. Verse 2. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd. While Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lab, labs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. He looked dejected. Why are you so angry. The Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. Praise the name of the living God. We see the sons of Adam and Eve now coming before the Lord. The Bible does not introduce the issue of worship or the, the issue of praise unto God. But now we see by actions yeah, Cain and Abel coming before the Lord. The Bible says that uh, Abel was a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. And when the time of harvest came, Cain presented some crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought the best portions of the festival labs for his flock. Everyone came. Both of them came before the Lord with their sacrifices. Now, I want you to understand here that giving is one of the aspects, is one of the dimensions of worship. Although, I'll speak about that later. And I'll dig much or i get much deeper on it. And so, by now coming to God... With whatever good which they had, eh, it was a way of worshipping the Lord. It was a way of telling the Lord, Jehovah, you are the Lord. Now, I was reading another theory about uh, 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 worship, this time of worship, that uh, from that time, it's a theory, from that time of Adam, because they sinned and they were thrown away, from that garden of Eden, now they would come to God with the sacrifices so that they would they would appease, so that they would please God, they would seek favor unto God, and by their worship and by their giving, they would show God that we are worshiping you, you are the only God, you deserve what is best from us and so Cain and Abel they emulated they copied they followed the path of their parents though the Bible has not written that and the Bible does not write everything we usually say if everything is here in the Bible we would have uh, a whole room full of one Bible. Eh? But now, from where we have led, they came before the Lord. They came to speak and to show God that you are the Lord. And so, from the beginning, we see worship. Now, by the time God took or led Jacob to where? To the rabbins. God was constituting a family called Israel.
Israel. And the reason why God was following up on Jacob because it was because Jacob was the one to become Israel. He was the one to bear the 12 sons who would later become the family called the family of God. And the family of God is Israel. And we see when Joseph died in Egypt and the time came when the, 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 the Pharaoh who was there by then could not show favor to them. And they were being punished and done very bad things. God called Moses and he told him, I have seen the afflictions from Exodus 37. I have seen the afflictions and I have heard the cry of my people in Egypt. And now I call you now to go and take them from there to the land of plenty called Canaan. Praise the name of the living God. Because God wanted to have a family. God wanted to have a people. Huh? A people who you worship. A people who you honor. A people who you do the work of exalting, glorifying, and praising the name of the Lord. And that is why the Samaritan woman is being told by Jesus that God is in the mission of seeking the true worshippers. And they will not just worship, but they worship in truth and in spirit. And now, I would like to say that if for sure you want or you qualify to be a true Christian, to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, there must be one element, and the element is worship. Worship is not just those sweet songs that we sing. Worship is not just crapping, praising, and speaking good words about God. Worship is about attitude. It's not a matter of where you worship. Eh? Because from the Bible, we see so many people who worshipped even in other places other than the temple. Other than the right place, which we might think is the right place uh, to worship or praise God. But from their heart, from their houses, from, eh, from the jail, from the wilderness, from wherever, we see people even in the foreign land, worshipping, praising, glorifying God, and speaking about their God. Praise the name of the living God. Bwana Apelosifa. Now, Isaiah chapter number 43. Isaiah chapter number 43. And verse 7. forty-three seven. The Bible says, Bring all who claim me as a your God. For I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Bring all who claim me as a God. For I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Everyone was created for the glory of God. You are created to worship. You are created for the glory of God. Eh? So, God needs you always. God cannot worship himself. God cannot glorify himself. He demands worship from his creation. And who are the creation? It is you. It is I. Yeah? That is why he said, Bring all who claim me as their God. For I have made them for my glory. It was I who created uh, them. Now, you cannot worship God naturally. Huh? 
from your natural aspect of your life, you cannot worship God. But to worship God, you need to be in His spirit. We have said, it is an attitude. Hmm? The moment you claim and you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, God will have that expectation from you. Praise the name of the living God. And what is that expectation? The expectation is that here you get worship. Here you see you act in a manner that he shows that he is your creator. He is the Lord. And he loves you. And I would like to to talk about some two or three characters or characteristics of a true worshipper or true worship. And I believe uh, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Number one, any true worshipper is in the covenant with the Lord. There is a covenant. There is a covenant. And we need to, to realize that uh, the reason why God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt it is because he had made a covenant that I will come for you. Eh? God follows his word to accomplish it. A covenant is, a, is an agreement between two people and it is bound by a condition. It is bound by a condition. So the moment you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and you become a worshiper, you are not just a, a, a worshiper who is there naturally. But there is a covenant between you and God. Exodus chapter number 2. Exodus chapter number 2. Verse 25. Exodus 2. Some verses there from verse 25. And you will be blessed. Two twenty-five. The Bible says, "I mean, twenty-three years passed, and the king of Egypt died. But the Israel continued to groan under the the burden of slavery. They cried out for help." And their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning. And he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. Mm. Praise the name of the living God. When the Israelites were there, the Bible says years passed and the king of Egypt who knew Joseph died. But the Israelites continued to groan under the burden of slavery. And they cried out for help. And their cry rose up unto God. But God heard their groaning and he remembered. These are two things. God heard their groaning. Excuse me. Whenever you, you cry, whoever cries, whatever happens, God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. God is omniscient. He knows everything. God is omnipotent. He has all the power. So there is nothing that catches God by surprise. There is nothing that gets back from God from his back. God knows everything. But there is that power that moves God. The Bible says God, the very first thing, God heard their cry. God saw their affliction. 
That is the first thing. But number two, the Bible says, and God remembered his promise, the covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because God followed that that lineage so that he may have a family called Israel. That is why he changes the name of Jacob. That from today, you are no longer Jacob. Your name is Israel. You will become the house of the family of God. So we need to know that a worshiper has that element. You are, you are not living naturally. When you believe in Jesus and you grow to a level of becoming a true worshiper, you are not just there. You don't walk. You don't live by chance. Yeah? It is not just by nature that you are there. But you are under what? Under the covenant. You are under the agreement. Let me tell you. The believers in Jesus Christ. It is not by good luck. That you will receive your promise. It is not by accident. That you will find yourself in the land of the living. But your promises. Whatever the word that the Lord has spoken about you. It is stamped. It is confirmed. And God is never a liar. Isaiah 55 verse 11. The Bible says. And the Lord follows his word. Eh, to accomplish it. So God followed the covenant. Of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. To deliver. That family. Of. The Israel from Egypt. To where? To the promised land. Praise the name of the living God. And it is also important to know. That. Uh, to them who believes in God, God deals them with the mercy. Those who stand before the Lord, not just to seek the mercy, but to remind God of whatever the covenant, whatever the promise that He has made with you. Because to whoever is a true worshiper, He is a man. Of covenant. Psalms 50. And verse 5. Psalms 50 and verse 5. The Bible says. Bring my faithful people to me. Those who made a covenant with me. By giving. Sacrifices. I know there are two points there. Number one is by giving sacrifices. And number two, by covenant. But I, I'm talking about the covenant. Bring my faithful people to me. Those who have made a covenant with me. By giving sacrifices. Those who have made a covenant with me. A worshiper is one of the parties in the covenant. God does not make a covenant to himself or by himself. Because we, we say that a covenant is an agreement between two people. And it is bound by condition. It has a condition. Eh? So God says that bring my faithful people to me. Those who have made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Those who have made a covenant to me. Let me tell you. We don't just live. A worshiper does not just walk. A worshiper does not just walk. A worshiper is not just healed. A worshiper does not seek to survive. But he seeks to live. Because this worshiper. It's not limited to the place of worship. It's not limited to time. It's not limited to where he, he or she is. 
He is a worshiper of the time. And so the Lord is watching over. Hmm? And I see in the book of Acts chapter number 10. The man who was not a Jew called Cornelius. Huh? Cornelius, if you connect from where we have read about the Samaritans, even the woman, the Samaritan woman is standing very confidently even to disconnect her, herself from whatever Jesus was trying to say. Huh? Because from that beginning, the woman knew that they don't connect. They don't share anything with the Jews. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter number 10, this man called Cornelius, he was a man who loved the Lord. He was a worshiper of the Lord. He supported and helped the poor. He was faithful in the prayer and he made the sacrifices to God. But there, but there, there was one barrier. He was not a Jew. And we see God sending the message to Peter. Peter, rise and go to the house of Cornelius. And Peter tried to to defend himself before God. And God you know. I have never eaten. I have never. Joined myself. With the people. Who are not true worshippers. But God told him. Whoever I the Lord has made holy. No one should call him defiled. God was speaking. God was following his covenant. God was following his word. The law. Could not stand. Between Cornelius and God. Peter could not stand. Even his faith could not stand. Between God and Cornelius. Yeah? And in chapter number 10. And verse number 34. Of the book of Acts. As I conclude. Because I know we will continue next time. Uh, Acts chapter number 10. And verse number 34. We see Peter now standing and saying then Peter replied huh? this is the time when he went to the to the Cornelius house he laid hands on the Cornelius family and the spirit of the Lord came upon them then Peter replied I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Yeah? But in every nation, he accepts those who fear him and those who do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ who is Lord of all. Yeah? Peter confessed and said, I have seen very clearly that God shows no favoritism because all the barriers have been broken. All the walls have been broken. It doesn't matter whether you are a Jew or you are a foreigner. But if you are a true worshiper, Cornelius worshipped the Lord. He feared the Lord with his family. In fact, during that time, it was hard for them to be accepted in the assembly of the Jewish church, of the Jewish congregation. They could not be accepted. And you need to know that when God called Paul, when he hit him with the brightness, he spoke to him and said, I have called you to reach the nations. 
The nations are those people who are outside the family of Israel. Outside the family of the 12 tribes of Israel. And we see the man of God or the apostle Paul getting to those people, preaching the good news to them. And those people turned to become the true worshippers of the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. As I conclude, there is no Samaritan, there is no Jew. Worship is not in that very beautiful temple. I was asking myself, why did God allow that enemy called Nebuchadnezzar to demolish and destroy the very beautiful temple of the Lord? Which the Bible says that Solomon offered 22,000 heads of bull. And when he slaughtered them, there was that river that he flew from the streets, from the temple to the streets of Jerusalem, the river of blood. And God allowed it to be demolished and be destroyed. Why did God allow? Because God does not dwell in the houses built by human hands but God dwells in our hearts worship is not more in where you are or where you worship it is in the heart and I was trying to do my research and study and I saw from that time of the house of the temple of Solomon the glory <laughs> In the temples from that time, eh? they came from being glorious to being groomy and groomy. You remember that? That altar or that temple which the young boys in Ezra chapter number 2, the young boys were, were trying to build when they came from Babylon. And the Bible says those old men who had seen and experienced the glory in the temple of Solomon. They wept and cried. Whereas this young man was celebrating that they have an altar. They have built something that can be called a praise of worship. Because it was to happen that God was to feel. God was to be comfortable. God was to build a temple. In the heart of men. In the heart of men. Eh? Why did God. Manifest his power. And he broke the, the doors. And the chains were broken. When Paul and Silas in Acts chapter number 16. When they were there. In the cells. And when they were worshipping and praising the Lord. Hmm? The Bible says the doors were open. Because worship is not about where. Worship is about who, what and how. It's a matter of the attitude that, we, that you have. And so I want to say as I finish. Even a time like now. When there is no. Uh, the, 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 the people or the church is not congregating or coming together. To worship and praise. Let me tell you. We are still worshiping the Lord. We are still giving. We are still offering our sacrifices unto God. Because the worship is not about where. The worship is about what. The worship is about how. In the name of Jesus. And I want to say. In Kenya or in our country. The church is not under any attack. We are not under any attack. God is receiving our worship. God is receiving our praise. We are giving. We are offering sacrifices. We are praising the Lord. We are speaking of his good deeds. We are reading the word. We are sharing the word. In all means possible. Because God is still at work. And his church is not under any attack. Or under any threat. In Jesus name. Praise the name of the living God. I see the children of Israel worshipping in the wilderness. Hmm? They had something they called the tabernacle. 
it was a moving temple it was a moving place of worship eh? they would walk eh? three tribes of israel in front three by side and three at the back eh? and they would eh, stop at some place they would worship they would praise and god would confirm that their sacrifice or their worship has reached God. And the crowd could come and encamp over them. Praise the name of the living God. Because worship, you can worship anywhere. Eh? I talked about the demolition of the temple. God was still on the throne. When the temple was being demolished. I see Daniel and his friends at Babylon. They worshipped the Lord. Even in the land where uh, it was full of uh, idol worship. But uh, they entered into the temple in the presence uh, of the holy God. The Bible says Daniel worshipped in the morning. He prayed in the afternoon and in the evening every day. He was very faithful. In chapter number 137 uh, of the book of Psalms. We see uh, uh, the, the Jews or the Israelites. The men and women of Zion. Eh? Eh? By the rivers of Babylon, worshipping, praising, and singing unto their God. And the Bible says, eh, their captors would come and demand the songs of their God. And they would stand and say, we are not ready to sing the songs of our God when we are in a foreign land. Because the worship is for the Lord and for our God alone. We are ready to suffer any consequences. But we are not ready to bow. We are not ready to sing. Whatever belonging than to God cannot be offered to any king. We are very much ready to die. Hallelujah. Even in the land of captivity, they worshipped. Praise the name of the living God. You see Daniel Shadrach, eh? when they were put into the lion's, lion's den, the fiery furnace, God was still with them. Because God is not limited to your place. God is not limited to where you are. God is everywhere. Praise the name of the living God. And I believe even a time like now, we will continue worshipping. We will continue praising. A giver is a giver. Hallelujah. Distance will not limit you from giving. If you are faithful with your tithes and your offerings, you will continue giving despite the distance. Praise the name of the living God. We are not entitled to giving when we are in the temple alone. But even wherever we are, we can offer our sacrifices unto God. Hallelujah. I pray to God that you will not forget that you are a worshiper. You will not forget that you love the Lord. You will not forget that you are a special person to God. You are a holy nation. You are devoted to God. May you continue. May you stand right. Because that was the message which Jesus tried to drive to the woman. That your worship is not limited to the prison of worship. Eh? It is not that mountain of Gerizim. It is not that well of Jacob. Where you say that that is the place where we, we worship. No. You see this woman even tried to tell Jesus. That uh, we are waiting for the Messiah. And Jesus told her. The Messiah has come. And I am the Messiah. God is in the mission of seeking for the true worshiper who will worship in God in truth and in his spirit. Wherever you are, wherever you are watching this program, may you purpose to be a truthful worshiper, to be a worshiper who worship in spirit, to walk right before the Lord. And very soon we are going back to the to our normal services, Bible study, worship, praise, and other uh, church meetings. But I believe whoever is a true and a right worshiper will not have deviated from the way of God. I believe you can stand and say, Jehovah is my shepherd. I shall not want. Even when I walk through eh, the shadows, the shadows of death. Eh? the darkness and whatever that surrounds it and calms me I shall not fear because the Lord God is with 
me. Hallelujah. I want us to pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I believe wherever you are, you can tell God something. You can speak to God and tell God, Father, I desire, it's my prayer. May you help me, oh God. I want to be huh, a, a worshiper who you worship in truth and in spirit. I want to love you despite the distance, despite me being far from my praise of worship. Can you speak unto the Lord in Jesus' name? We worship you, our Father. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the word today that you are in the mission of seeking and looking for those who you worship in truth and in spirit, O oh God. Father, as we have said today, that nothing can stop our worship to you. Even when we are right in our houses, even when we are in our places of work, even when we are wherever we are, O oh God, nothing will stop us from from worshipping you, from loving you, from doing whatever you command us to do, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my viewer, wherever he or she is, oh God, at their places of work, at their houses, oh Father, may the Spirit of the Lord touch them, oh God, may you remind them, Jehovah, may the Spirit of the Lord continue to touch them, oh God, that they will continue to offer, Mighty God, the uh, worship, the sacrifices unto you, Father, because you are the Lord. Knowing Jehovah that soon and soon we are returning to our praises of worship Jehovah. And we shall congregate and come together to offer sacrifices unto you, O oh God, because you are the Father and you are the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray today, every one of us will become the, the, the worshiper who is true and who is in his spirit in jesus name we love you god we worship you father for there is none like you in jesus mighty name we do pray and we believe and we believe amen 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 may the lord bless you may the favor and the grace of the lord rocket you wherever you are may the power of the lord work in your situation in your life and in your everything. I will continue next week from there. About the identities. Or the characteristics of a true worshipper. Uh, or the elements of true worship. And I know the Lord will bless us. I take this opportunity to thank you. You all. I know you have stood with us. You have prayed for us. You have supported us. Hmm? Financially. Morally. And we feel that we are strong. To continue. We are trusting God that soon we will return to our normal services and we will come together to the church to praise and to continue with our programs. But in the meantime, we shall continue serving because there is God in heaven. May the Lord bless you. May the favor of the Lord be upon you and with you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And may now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you so much. Amen. Uh, it is my trust and it is my hope that uh, you've been blessed by the message of today. So uh, I want to thank you for them that have been joining us. We are so glad that you could find time and join us for the service today. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord do you good. I believe and I know that uh, the message has been a blessing to us. And uh, it is the will of God. It is the plan of God that uh, he will see true worshippers in us to the glory and to the praise of of the name of the Lord. So uh, I stand here on behalf of Kenya Assemblies of God, uh, Thika Town, to just ask you, you who, are, who has been watching us, who has been following this service live at uh, this particular page, that uh, uh, if you feel compelled of the Spirit to continue partnering with the servant of God, to continue partnering with this particular ministry, uh, the giving details are on the screen as you're seeing now. Uh, the giving details are on the screen. If you wish uh, to 
have a moment with the man of God, if you wish to have a moment uh, for counseling and pastoral, any kind of pastoral counsel that you will need, uh, the number to contact is on the screen right now. And uh, I believe and I know that uh, you shall uh, be ministered to, to the glory and to the praise of the name of the Lord. We want to thank everybody that has been partnering with the servant of God and with this particular ministry. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. May the Lord expand your territories. Indeed, um, to him that giveth, uh, there is a reward that they are going to receive from the heavens because the Lord rewards them that diligently seek him in the name of Jesus. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Shalom. Shalom.